Hey guys, welcome back uh, to another episode of Do What You Love and Love What You Do. So excited, man. Just finished the holidays. Got Christmas coming up. Um, my mom and dad came to visit me. And um, just, I mean, just blessings on top of blessing, guys. A lot of things happening with Dream Chaser Academy. And we have a special guest on the show, guys. And I don't know uh, really how to introduce you without, you know, the, the professional way. Um, you know, been, you've been knowing me my whole life. Uh, actually, at the hospital when I was born, uh, mm-hmm. basically my sister from another mother, um, and we just grew up with each other and watching each other's accomplishments and uh, watching each other just do great things. And so I finally got to catch up with you, um, you know, with your schedule and, and all the exciting things that you're doing. I have Michelle McKissick uh, on the show today, Do What You Love, Love What You Do, all the way out there um, in Arlington, Texas. Uh, yep. Where we grew up. Hey, Michelle, what's going on? Nothing much. How you doing, Jacob? Uh, doing great. Um, just excited, man. I'm finally glad I got to call, catch up with you. Um, you know, you, you've been real busy. Uh, I don't want to give the show away, but I don't want to let the cat out the bag and let them know what you've been doing. But yeah. what's up? Nothing much. You know, I'm just, it was a holiday season. So, yeah, I came through that. I was sick a little bit before then. So, um I'm, it's definitely a blessing to be here right now in a good place. That's good. That's good. So let's just get right into it. Um, Michelle, what's your background? You know, what did you study in school? Um, and, you know, what do you do now? Well, I went to school for radio, television, film. Um, and I had a minor in communication studies. And with that, I tried my hand at the entertainment industry. I knew I wanted to be a part of it, but I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. Well, I, I said I wanted to write. But as a kid, you know, you think of going into entertainment, you think of acting. You want to be in front of the camera because that's all you know. That's all you've seen. Right. Um, But I I don't like attention. So, Mm. and I have a terrible memory. So I realized quickly that acting isn't necessarily going to be my forte. Right. But um, I did the radio TV film major and I majored in production and I wanted to be a creative. I wanted to help write and 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 create the stories that you see even though I won't be the one acting them out right but like you said we grew up in Arlington I love Arlington I'm a Texan I'm a southerner and California is expensive New York is expensive and as a as a fresh or a fresh graduate I don't I can't afford to live there my dad said I'm not gonna pay for mortgage here and there because rent in LA is equivalent to mortgage in Texas. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's stupid. So it's literally stupid. I, I went, I visited and I'm just like, I don't know how people do it, but whatever. So I didn't have the resources to go to the coast. So I tried to make my dreams happen here. And I, you know, I, I did, a, I did some stuff, but um, to try to get the, the radio TV film thing launched, but it never took off the way I would want. And I'm a sucker for security. Right. I like knowing where my next meal is coming from. Like I don't have, I don't have starving artistry in my blood. I'm not cut out that way. Right. So I went back to school and I got a master's degree from, um, cause I went to TCU for undergrad. Okay. Okay. And then I went to DBU Dallas Baptist university for my master's and that's a professional development with an emphasis in marketing. And, um, I had an internship, and it was in a, a cubicle. I didn't really like my boss. And I was just like, everyone that came to work was counting down to retirement. Yeah. And they not, not only did they know when they retired, but they could tell you when everybody else in the, in the office retired. And I was like, what type of existence is this? Right, right. I'm what, 24 um, years old. And I'm just like, I can't count down until I'm 65. Like, that'd be terrible. It's crazy. So I knew that that probably wasn't the route for me to take. Um, so then I got my teacher certification. I went in the classroom. I, so I was like, if I can't, um, you know, do, if I can't live the TV thing right now, I could at least do something that I won't dread every day and have to count down until I get to get out of here. Right. So, and, and, I, and I always told myself if I ever became a teacher, I would teach the one subject that was my favorite subject in high school that my favorite teacher taught and that was speech. So speech. I went back okay. and I was a speech teacher. Wow. So um so you're you, you were a speech teacher. Um and I remember that. I remember you um you know actually was a coach. 
uh, a debate coach. And um, I remember you were excited. Yeah, you used to be excited about the competitions, be out all night. Um, and y'all did pretty well. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, just, just to uh, rewind a little bit, you skipped some stuff. Uh, I got written down. You thought I forgot. Um, so in um, high school, you were a Powder Puff MVP. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, I think oh you um, – you know, I think you, you might have drew a flag for a, some kind of dance celebration after you scored a touchdown. Did I? Um, you know, and I think it was maybe flag or touch, and I think you, like, just tackled or stiff-armed somebody. I mean, um, I may have stiff-armed. I got four touchdowns that game. Yeah, yeah it, it was it was, it was, uh, uh, it was a great experience, and uh, you crushed it. You crushed it. And so, um, you know, I definitely remember that and one of your big accomplishments. And then um, – <laughs> Yeah, and then, uh, you know, I, I remember you uh, working, uh, doing some stuff with Steve Harvey. Um, and you actually yeah, tried yeah. to put me on with that. And, um, you know, I just couldn't do it with the schedule working out. Yeah. Um, and I needed some money, and they weren't paying. So uh, I couldn't I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't do it. Uh, but I remember that. I remember that experience. And then you yeah. met up with Steve again. Yeah. And another big accomplishment that you had is the record that still holds – um, I think it was 191 points. Uh, 194. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. 194 points. Yeah. On the uh, fast, on the money, money bonus, uh, fast one. I think. On Family Feud. Uh, yeah, on Family Feud. So, man, you just uh, to me, you already live in a celebrity status. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, I'm just happy to just just to be able to you know catch up with you. You know. Uh, mm-hmm get a response from a text, but definitely proud of you and the things you've done. Um, so you were a teacher and, mm-hmm. you know, I remember the conversations we had, cause I definitely, uh, you know, that's my passion. We ran camps together. Yeah. Um, you know, we did that. So kids were our passion. So we were on the phone and then it seemed like you needed another challenge after that. So, um, and you started writing on the side and, and doing that. Um, so I know you currently have a, I have a nine to five, but, um, let's just dig into some things. Um, you know, the name of the show is Do What You Love, Love What You Do. And you mentioned some key things earlier um, with being in that cubicle. And that story is heard about 90% in America um, in, in, in the fields, uh, different fields. No matter what field you're in, people are dreading going to work. People are dreading Mondays. They say heart attacks happen on Monday, the most oh, wow. Monday in the morning. Um, so being that the title shows Do What You Love, Love What You Do, what, what does that mean to you, Michelle? I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, do what you love and love what you do. Like, <laughs> yeah. First, you have to find out what do you love. Right, right. And then, and then do it. And then do but, it, right? But the trick is, I mean, and it, honestly, that's a lot easier said than done. So although it's very self-explanatory, it's not necessarily easy. And I, as a teacher, and I taught high school, so... I could talk and connect with my students and I did that a lot and I would give them a lot of what I thought was practical um, advice and life advice and what to do. And and kids would be like, some kids want to do things that just make money. Oh, I want to do this. I want to be a doctor because doctors make money. I want to be a lawyer. Lawyers make money. I want to do, I want to get into, um, do the stock market. That makes money. Other kids, they just want to do something because, oh, I'm passionate about, You know, I really have a heart for this and I have a Mm -hmm. heart for that and I like that. But I'm like, but that don't make any money. You you have to have a balance between um, your desires and your passion and reality. Like, you know, unless you plan on living with three roommates for the rest of your life or staying with your parents the whole time, you can't always just do what you love. But what you love isn't, you know, profitable to an extent. But I say that with caution if what you love normally doesn't isn't a lucrative or even a suitable for steady pay, um, you have to find a way to make it that way. Right. You right. Have to kind of find a way to, how do I channel what I love and to, and to make it um, profitable or make it something that I can do as a profession or, you know, even how do I split my time to where I do routinely what I like and what I feel has just cause and what's important, and I can and I can dedicate a lot of my free time to what I truly love. Even though, because like my dad used to say that my grandmother, my grandmother was a school teacher too, so okay. education runs in my family. 
And my dad said teaching was her money, but the church was her honey. Yeah. Because she loved, she had a heart for God. She was a strong Christian woman. Her husband was a pastor. So she was a preacher's wife. So my dad, he made it clear. Like, I mean, she liked teaching. Of course she could, you know, sow into kids' lives and, and be a, a strong vessel there. God could yeah. use her in the classroom. But her heart was in the church. And her so that's what he said. I never forgot when he would say that, that, um, you know, her job was her money, but this over here was her honey. Like, right. that's what she loved. So sometimes that may be the route, the route you have to take is, you know, deciding, can my passion, you know, actually be my money as well? Or and, does it just have to, do I have to keep those two separate? Yeah. And, and one thing, Shell, um, you know, I've been, I've been really digging deep into is your purpose as well. And the okay, difference yeah. between your passion and your purpose. Cause you know, you can, I can be, I'm passionate about basketball, but that. I'm, I'm that watching might, the game right now. Yeah. That, that, that might, that, that's, that's definitely not my purpose. Yeah, uh, sure. um, but I, you know, my purpose is, you know, helping mm-hmm. others and impacting lives. So I coach basketball. Right. Um, and so I stay around the game and, and use basketball as a tool to um, teach life lessons. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I, I use, I say that because, you know, I understand um, my purpose here is to impact lives and serve others as many, as much as I can through different webinars, through speaking, um, however I can uh, motivate others to uh, go out there and find their own true passion and yeah. search for their purpose. Um, and, I, and I think uh, a lot of people don't understand. They don't even know what their purpose is. They might like things real a lot, and that might be their passion. But is that really your purpose? You know, yeah. um, you know what, what are you using the, your gifts and talents for, and how is it – um, you know, making the world a better place. Um, and I think that's where we have to find out and how we can utilize our gifts and talents to, um, you know, impact other people. And so that's why I think uh, that purpose part comes in. You got anything to say about that? No, I mean, I agree with you. You definitely have to know your purpose. And I liked how you differentiated between passion and purpose. Like I could, I could be gung ho over this, but if I'm not great at it, there's a great chance that, you know, that's not what I was purposed to do. Right. Regardless of my love for it, regardless of how, you know, passionate I feel about it. I can't, you know, like I can't reach the masses with this, with this passion because I'm not good enough. The masses will never know me through this, but that doesn't mean I can't, I can't um, still be around it. I can surround myself with a passion while fulfilling my purpose. And mm. I think that's what you referenced. Uh, and, and coaching and teaching does that a lot. You know, uh, there's a saying, those who can't teach. And that's not totally fair. Right. Um, but I, w- I would argue there's an element of truth to it as well. Like, there, like, let's take coaches. Like, there are some people on the basketball, like a basketball or football, they've never played in their lives. Yeah. But they're just, they have a mind for it. They can see the game in a way that the average person can't. Mm-hmm. So although they can't personally dribble the ball or, you know, throw touchdowns or do, you know, whatever they can, they can maximize the talent of the people that can. Mm. So you do have to know, you know, separate between the passion and what my purpose, you know, if. Man, that's crazy that you hit on that. I'm actually uh, reading this book right now by uh, Maxwell, uh, okay. 21 Laws of Leadership. And that's one thing he talked about um, is, um, you know, if you have a team, whatever team you're on, you're, you're, as a leader, maximizing uh, the, the talents of everybody else around you. Yeah. And, uh, that, might, that might be your strong point uh, mm-hmm. to do that. Um, so really, uh, Michelle, just again, just super proud of you and things that you accomplished. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, okay. Am I your first uh, interview since uh, the debut? Um, or have you been interviewed by different magazines or anything like that uh, before I spill the beans of what uh, uh, you debuted for? Yeah, I was about to say, do, do they even know what you're referencing? Not yet, um, not yet. I had, I had an interview like the week before it came out. I contacted my dad. Because I'm not, but she found my dad. She sent my dad a 
she slid into my daddy's DMs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she was like, I'm trying to get a hold of your daughter. Yeah. Um, and so he just sent that information to me. So she has a, um, a publication. So I did that for her. And it, she, I think it, it, it released the day or the week of. Okay. Uh, yeah. But okay, I cool, been, cool. Yeah, you're not on Facebook, though. You're not on Facebook. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, you're not on Facebook. Definitely on Instagram. Yeah. I definitely want people to follow you on Instagram. We'll get that information out. And they'll also be on the bottom of our screen. So I definitely, um, if you're viewing this, you can definitely follow uh, Michelle on her journey. Uh, so let's talk about this journey. So um, okay. you, 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 you did it. Um, you produced the film. I'm still, um, I'm still doing it, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It got on TV one. It was a hit. Um, you, you know, so we're really excited to see you on there uh, doing that. I was, I was proud. Um, you know, watching it, you know, I made my family watch it and, uh, we just, you know, it was, it was a good movie. It was a good family movie. Like, um, just too many commercials. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, but <laughs> How do you said that I was, um, I was on Twitter there, like while it was airing and Nelly, uh, the rapper, he was tweeting cause I guess he's friend. Oh, cause him and Boris are on, um, oh, real uh, Oh man, that oh that that's my show, man. That show is so funny. And so I guess you know because he has that relationship with Boris and Nicole, he yeah. was like, he tweeted them. He was like, "Yo, I'm trying to watch y'all's movie, but it's all these commercials, man." <laughs> so it was funny that you mentioned that because that's what what he said too. Yeah, that so, commercials pay the bills. Yeah, well, so uh, you made it. Um, you made it on there. You had that. You know, had that experience. You see my shirt. Trust the process. TTP. Yeah. Um. Tell us the process, you know, how, how did you stick with it? How many no's did you get? Um, yeah. You know, the, 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 tell us the downtime and the, uh, what were the hard times and, you know, how did you persevere through that and, and stay consistent uh, with the process? Man, actually, this this literally was a process. Like, it, I, I shouldn't have, my movie should have never been made, should have never been produced, um, but... I, you know, that don't, just because you don't, well, let me start from the beginning. So, like I told you earlier, I graduated and I tried my hand at radio TV film stuff locally here in, mm -hmm. in Texas. That's when I did like the Steve Harvey stuff. And I know America's Got Talent came into town. So I was doing, I did little stuff like that, but it wasn't consistent, right? And although my parents didn't mind or complain, I just felt like I wasn't adequate and living up to what I needed to do. Right. They already, you know, paid for this expensive degree from TCU. And I just, I didn't feel like I was carrying my, you know, my end of the mm -hmm. bargain. So I went back to school and did my thing, but I, I started writing. And I was a teacher, so I had summers off. So one summer, um, I went to California and I stayed out there for a month. And it was a, my dad's friend, he's a preacher, there are two. Pre my dad has two preacher friends. Name one in in California. So Wayne Cheney is the first one, and he hooked me up with this lady named Holly Carter. And she, he was like, he was doing a TV show. Like Preachers of LA came out, or it was okay. coming out. Okay, and I remember he was that. The producer of Preachers of LA, and mm -hmm. he was one of the preachers on the show. And he was like, you need to get with her. She's this director, producer, you know, she's a powerhouse. I think because he knew that I had a passion for entertainment. Okay. That's another nugget. Sometimes don't conceal your passions because, and honestly, I don't even remember telling him. Right. But he knew because he struck up. I remember we were in my father's kitchen and he was like, so I hear you like, you know, Hollywood and entertainment. You're trying to do that thing. And he put me on to Holly because I spoke it. So that, that's one thing I guess would, you know, don't, don't hide what you're passionate about because you never know who, who knows who. Yeah. Yeah. Connect you to who. So, but yeah, so he was like, go out, go out there. So I went out there. I stayed with my dad's preacher friend, um, Wayne Cooper. Like I actually stayed with Wayne Cooper and our friend Janice, you know, that's her father. And, um, and they let me stay at their house for a month free of charge which wow. is a blessing because it is a blessing. You know, again, LA is really expensive. Imagine an Airbnb in LA for a month. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine how much that would cost. Um, but I, they didn't charge me a dime. Mm. Um, 
So I stayed with them and, and Wayne Chaney hooked it up to where I could work with Holly. So I was going to work every day is Holly's essential okay. assistant. Okay. It was unpaid. Here I am, a college graduate. At this point, I have two degrees. I have a bachelor's and a master's. Uh-huh. So I got these expensive tail degrees. And you still putting in that work for you? I'm job. working as a teacher. Uh-huh. I spent money on my plane ticket and I had a rental car while I was out there. Mm-hmm. And I'm not getting paid anything. Not getting paid nothing. Not getting paid a dime other mm-hmm. than um, relationship. Relationship equity is what I got paid. Right, right, so right. I and Janice's dad, they lived out in um, Pasadena, California. California. Holly's office was like downtown LA. Mm. So that was quite a drive every morning. But again, I was staying free. So right. I, I made that trip every day. Um, and I put in that work just to build those relationships. And then I would come home. So I would go work with her. I would come home or come to, to the Cooper's house. And I, and I started writing I had this idea. The Lord just put this idea in my head and my heart um, several years prior. But I I remember I was on Janice's couch um, because they weren't there. And I was just on the couch and I just started. That's when I gave myself my first detailed outline. Okay. Well, summer 2012. I spent a month out there. I think I came back. And then I ended up writing the I finished. I fleshed out the outline. I wrote the whole script. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, you know, I kind of sat on it for a little bit. I had to, I, I polished it up. I got it to where I thought it was a good spot. And then I started entering into competitions. Some competitions said no. Um, but one competition, I remember I was at work. I was at pa- parent-teacher night. Uh-huh. It, was, it was parent-teacher conference day. Right. Uh, it, was, it was at nighttime. And I was seated at my table, and then I got this email and it was like, you've been accepted into the International Faith and Family Film Competition. I was like, oh my gosh. You know, that was, a, that was, that was, I remember just feeling, I can't ex- describe how that Yeah, feels. yeah. It's like an unbelievable feeling. Like, it, it's validation. Right. Right. You know, to give value. It's one thing for your parents and your friends to be like, good job, you know, but for, for to industry, actually see it, to actually see yeah. it come through. So that was cool. And, um, so let me ask you this. Did, uh-huh. when, when you was getting that rejection, like, did you feel down or were you like, I know you played sports in the sports your whole life. So um, you already had that resilient attitude, like, you know, next play, bounce back type attitude. Did you still have that, um, you know, attitude or, or did it hurt you a little bit or? Um, rejection hurts. Rejection hurts. And, and I'll say rejection to something like this is more personal to me right. than an athletic failure. Cause sometimes in athletic failures, you know, you see your blood, you're, you're out there on the court, on the field, mm-hmm. you know, I ran track, you on the track. So if the person next to you just outdoes you. Like it's, it's, it's pretty like right. you know, the same blood, sweat and tears. And you just got outmatched and you can't win them all. That's my dad. You say you can't win them all. But when it's something so personal, it's like you're writing, you feel like they're accepting or rejecting you. You, yeah. You know, and it's, it's, it's more, it was more, it was always more personal to me. So it definitely hurt. Um, but, but they, the, the first thing they tell you in Hollywood, you have to have thick skin. You mm-hmm. have to have tough skin. You don't have tough skin. You don't have thick skin. You won't make it. Cause you're going to hear 50 no's before you ever hear a maybe. Yeah. Oh. Um, so. And if you can't accept those 50 no's, but that, that one maybe may be all you need, you know? Um, it could be your turning point. But, so yeah, so I entered the competition and I went out to LA. I was a finalist. I was a top two finalist. And I ended up losing to a lady who I thought was really accomplished for it to be an amateur competition. Um, but I was like, you know, I'm not going to be salty just to even be here. I think I'm losing light. Um, but, uh, I don't even know how to get it back, honestly, but right there, right there. Just to, um, just to be there was, was still, it was really cool. And, and, And my mom and my sister flew out there with me. So that was a nice experience. And then I kept, I, even with the same script, I kept working on it. I took feedback and criticism 
and I apply that to to the work and then how do I get it better? Okay, I, I see it's good because these people accepted it, but obviously it has room to grow and improve. Right. So I kept improving it. TV One came along. They have this competition. American Black Film Festival is the film festival that sponsors, that hosts. Like that, it's, it's, it's the largest Black film festival in America, I believe. Okay. TV One sponsors the screenplay writing competition of that film festival. So they have like, you could submit actual film, short film, like HBO does a short film competition and they're the big sponsor, but for the writing, it's TV One. So I submitted my, the same script that I submitted to this previous one. Uh I changed it, I gave it a new name. It was called The Experiment. I renamed it to Downsize and I kind of, because TV One had different specifications because it was made, it was, because I originally wrote it to be produced for movie theaters. Mm. TV One is, of course, a cable network, so right. I had to change it to where it would fit, you know, the two okay. hour time block with commercials. So right, right. I, had to, I had to change it a little bit. Um, but I did that, I submitted it, and I didn't get accepted. So the first year I submitted it, um, downsized to TV One, I didn't get accepted. My homeboy, I met him at American um, Black film festival uh several years prior Uh we both submitted films that year he got accepted i didn't but i was i was so happy for him i wasn't jealous i wasn't mad that's good though you know what i'm saying that's good so um just want to jump in there right there because you you brought up a good point like you know you might be doing something with together and like you just said one of your friends or something might Mm -hmm. make it and but you you don't but now what I see a lot is like people get mad or it yeah. ruins a relationship instead of showing love for that person and supporting them. I'm I'm a real believer of like whatever you give out, that's what you get. So, you know, yeah. if you're giving more love out, that's what you gonna that's what you're gonna get back. Yeah. Um, and so I'm definitely gonna want to highlight that point because you made a good point because sometimes often uh, you see people grinded it out, grinded it out, grinded it out. It's like even in sports, I know many of you big sports fans, but sports, we grinded it out, getting ready for the draft. Dang, yeah. my boy got drafted. I didn't. No, nah, I, I jump higher than him. I'm faster than him yeah. type talk. Um, you start comparing yourselves. Yeah. And so definitely wanted to highlight that point. Um, yeah. um, let's, let's fast forward right quick. You got the – um, uh, did you even win? Did you win? Did, did, my mistake. Did you no. win? So the what? the first time I entered, I didn't get accepted at all. Uh huh. The next year, I was gonna try to write a, an entirely different script, and mm-hmm. I had started writing. I didn't finish it in time. Okay. And so, I I was being trifling, just to be honest. So I, I pushed it too close to the deadline, and I wasn't gonna make it. Uh-huh. The competition closed at like eleven fifty nine my time, or no ten fifty nine my time. Um, so I was like, crap, I'm just going to re-enter yeah. my the the first one. that I that got rejected last year. I'm going to re-enter it. Uh-huh. I'm at home. I forgot what happened. Like I had all kinds of technical issues. My internet, my printer, because I had to, you had to download this, um, the application and fill it out and scan it and send it back in. If nothing, you know, they say what can go on wrong will go wrong. Everything went wrong. Everything went wrong. And mind you, I'm trying to do it like a quarter till the deadline. And then, and I just couldn't, I couldn't finish it in time. I couldn't. And then I was just kicking myself. I, I was so mad. I was like, Michelle, not only did you not do the new script like you should have, you were so trifling, you couldn't even resubmit the old script. Mm-hmm. Um, and I felt, I felt bad for a couple of days. And then that same friend who made it the year before, he texted me. I was at church. It was a Sunday. He texted me. He was like, yo, you'll never guess this. They reopened submissions. You have two days. Yeah. And I was like, what? He sent me a screenshot where, because I wasn't on Instagram at the time. So he sent mm-hmm. me a screenshot on Instagram where they, they reopened submissions for that competition. And so, and he's the one that told me. So I ran back and I got my stuff in that time. And, and I, and oddly I submitted another, I did a video competition. I made this commercial and I was really excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. 
Um, I thought that was going to go further because mind you, they already rejected this first script oh. so I'm doing that just because, but then I got, I was at home, I got a phone call and it was a girl and she was like, you were accepted. You know, your screenplay was accepted. And I'm thinking she was meaning the video I submitted, but so I had to stop and listen. I'm like, Oh, the script totally wasn't expecting it. Um, so that was awesome. I was a finalist. I was a top three finalist. I went out there. I ended up losing. Uh, how'd that feel? You thought you had that one in the bag or, or were you just happy being top three or? Um, it w- mixed emotions. Mm-hmm. Um, for one, they're, they're three finalists, but there ended up being four of us because two girls wrote one script together. Okay. Okay. So there's three scripts that were finalists, but actually four girls, all, all of the finalists were from Texas. The other finalist, she was from Arlington. Mm-hmm. We fly on the same plane to Miami. Like mm. we don't even know each other. She was just, and we were on the same row. And she was like, "Excuse me, is your name Michelle?" And I was like, "Yeah, you know." Um, but we got kind of close. Like over that weekend, we were all in the same struggle. We're all aspiring right. writers, and so you kind of you form this bond, you right. know. And so you are, you're proud of them. Of course you want to win. And I did want to win. And we got to do this live um, scene read. So you have like celebrities that actually read a little snippet of our script. And I thought the audience took to mine very well. I got, it was very favorable response. People laughed when I thought they should, you Mm -hmm. know, I got some more laughs when I didn't think I would, but it was still positive. So I thought I had a really good shot. I was getting good feedback. I thought I had a really good shot. And I was, I'm not going to lie to you. I was really hopeful. You feel like you're at like the Oscars or something like, yeah. You know, yeah. You saw all the nominees faces, like, you know, um, and I thought I had a real good chance and they didn't call my name. And I was like, well, dang. Um, but I was happy for, for my new friend and her and her success and in her, her winning. Um, and then life went on. And that was in June. That was in June. And and how it works is if you win, they make your your they turn your script into a movie and it premieres at the festival the next year. Okay. I lost. So in theory, they're gonna produce this girl's script into a movie. Right. They called me in February of the following year. So that was in June. Come February, they're like, hey, we wanna enter into talks about you know, the rewriting process is what they said. And I was like, oh, okay. And I'm just thinking like, man, they may actually, cause I heard that they, they, sometimes they'll do both. They'll do mine uh-huh. and hers maybe. So I thought it was one of those deals. It wasn't until, I'm talking to them for a whole week. It wasn't until a week later, the lady calls me from TV one and she was like, hey, did we ever tell you we're doing your movie? And I was like, no. And she was like, I was talking to another girl and I was like, She was like, I bet Michelle was really excited when she found out. And she said, and I couldn't recount your excitement. And then it dawned on me. We never told her. And so she told me, and I was like, that's crazy. And not only were they making my movie, but they were going to premiere at the festival. They were doing mine instead of the other girls. Wow. And I was like, so that's why I said, like, mine, it shouldn't have been made. Wow. Um, And if it were to get made, it shouldn't have been done with that much fanfare. Because the, the American Black Film Festival is a big deal. You know, all the celebrities are out, the stars of the movie come out, and you get to meet them. You know, it's, it's, it's a big deal. Um, but, man, yeah. That's, I, yeah. Man, that's, that's awesome. I mean, it's funny how sometimes things work out. Yeah. Like I said, I was just, man, super excited for you, um, especially hearing about that. Um, you know, all the conversations that uh, we have, um, together, I, I really those um, mean a lot to me, especially w- where we at now in our careers and what we're trying to accomplish, and those big dreams and goals that we that we both have. Um, yeah. uh, those conversations mean a lot, and so uh, definitely as we close, um, I got a uh, couple of questions. One is how do you stay motivated, and the second one, what do, what do you leave? What can you leave us, people like me? I still work, uh, but I fall under that do what you love love what you do I probably won't ever give up uh uh, teaching um and coaching um I can't say never but um I wake up it's it's a blessing just to be able to do what I do that um so what do you what do you say to people like me who who are building 
a business or building a brand on the side? What kind of tips do you have for us? And then, um, you know, how do you stay motivated um, every day? Uh, well, I'll, I'll start with the motivation. The motivation just comes out of a desire, a desire to, to accomplish what you want it to do. You know, like when I go to work, as much as I, I work for a great organization, they treat me well. They, you know, it, it's, it's literally a great organization, but it wasn't my vision. That organization was not, I, it wasn't on my vision board. It was not something I set out to do. I wasn't born with the purpose of making that business excel and succeed mm -hmm. and surpass expectations. That's someone else's vision, you know? And so I'm like, if I can wake up every day and go make sure that someone else lives out their vision, how dare I not do it to, to myself? You know, so that, that kind of motivates me. And I will say a taste of success also helps. Yeah. Like, and you got to keep fighting. But like I said, my, my movie should have never been done. And I was trifling. I didn't even get it in on time. Mm. They had to open it back up in order for me to get it in. And that's when I ended up getting nominated, still losing, and God still provided to where I got my movie made. Yeah, so, yeah. When you know that as trifling as you are and as much as you aren't committed to your goal like you should be, God still got your back. They got your back. That That's motivating because he's like, yo, I ain't going to keep holding you up too much longer. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. That, went, that, opp that window of opportunity, you yeah. never know. And it just so happened to open for you again. It did, but that's motivating. But that, that tells me that I'm not in this by myself. Right. And it also tells me that I'm in the right direction. You know, because sometimes you're, you're, you're reaching for something that God really don't have for you. And you're like, God, why aren't you, why aren't you opening this door? Why isn't, why don't, why don't I see these provisions? Well, he's like, because I didn't tell you to do it. Right, right. You know? But I've been in the situation where I'm not doing my part and God is still, he picks me up and carries me through the door. And that just kind of gives me motivation to know, you know, Michelle, if you'll do it, God will see it through. Um, so that's motivation. Tips. I too am working a nine to five. So I, I, I am one of, you know, I'm one of, you one of us. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm in that number. Um, and I, I'm, I'm pragmatic. Like I told you earlier, I don't have starving artistry in my blood. So I'm not one of the ones that will tell you just to make that leap. Just go make that dive. Go do it. Yeah. Have faith in yourself. I think you should have faith in yourself, but I think you should have, have faith, have faith with a reason. Right. You, know, you have bills, you have responsibility. Um, so don't be, don't neglect your responsibility. And if you really want, what I tell people is I'm, I'm trying to make it to where my passion will, my job will get in the way of my passion. Right, and, right, right. And then you just have to get rid of your I, job. I have to, like when the point that my job is holding me up, mm -hmm. if I have, like I worked with a guy when I was teaching, I was in the classroom. He was a teacher as well. He made furniture on the side. He would take um old sheds he would take refurbished texas wood and make it into beautiful furniture so he drove by and saw a shack he would go and tear that wood down polish it up refurnish it and make it into a table make it into a couch or a bench and it got to the point where teaching was stopping him from doing that his business was booming so much he was like i had to let go of teaching he let go of teaching in the middle of the school year because he was like, I can't, I'm, I'm getting these big contracts and I can't turn it down. I can't keep up. Yeah. That, that's the goal is to, but you got to pursue, if he wasn't pursuing it in his part time, it would have never inched its way over to being full time. Mm. So just, I mean, oh, you have to remind yourself why you want it. Why? Yeah. If you remind yourself why you want it, then that should be enough to motivate you. Or, and, if, and especially if you don't like your job, if you don't like mm. your job, you don't like your company. That's well. That's that's ninety percent of America, Shell. I mean, yeah, um, I know that's that's most of us. What it is is complacency and comfort. It's mm -hmm. really comfortable. Even me, like even like I said, I like the people I work with. I like the job that I, the company I work for. Um, but I also really like that check. Yeah, and I think if we more than anything, that's why we do it. That that security. Yeah, yeah. I remember me you used to talk uh, about teachers and stuff. And sometimes. You know, I, I got to remove myself from some of the teachers, like some of the negativity I hear at work. Yeah. Um, it just, I'm like, oh man, I'm, you know, just go do something else. You know, right. 
you know. Well, and I got to that point, honestly, where uh-huh. I, I loved teaching. I loved being in the classroom. I loved, I tell people, people always ask me, they're like, do you, do you, do you miss teaching? And I say, I miss having a job that matters. Because ever since I've started working in corporate America, I haven't felt like my jobs matter at all. Just right. to be honest with you, I don't feel that. I, I'm not changing lives. When I was in the classroom, I held conversations with kids. I talked them out of stuff. You know, they can confide in me about certain right. things. My job mattered. It don't matter now. Um, but then there's still the bureaucracy, the red tape, the people in D.C. and Austin telling me how to run my classroom. Mm-hmm. You know, that gets old, too. And so I got to a point where I wasn't happy in that. Yeah. And so I got out and I told myself, I was like, some teachers, there's a particular lady I worked with. She had a reputation for being a terrible teacher. And I said, I promise you at one point, she probably wasn't that bad. She just got beat up by the system. Yeah. But instead of leaving, she just, she, she decided I'm, it's a check. When she lost her passion, but she kept the check. And then she became a miserable teacher for it Mm. as to where when when I felt my passion or at least my happiness, you know, kind of slipping away in the classroom, I was like, I'll be doing these kids a disservice if I stayed because kids can tell when you aren't passionate. Kids can tell when your heart isn't there. And that's crazy. That's crazy. You brought that up because when I made, I was ready to find something different. Um, when I left North Carolina, uh, just for the same reasons, but yeah. to beat up. And I end up, you know, I was ready to go full time entrepreneur when I moved to Virginia. I'm um, gonna find something else to do, but I just so happened to, um, you know, get a phone call, and um, it's like renewed. They have this renewed energy in me, uh, just new environment. You know, now I'm back to doing what I love and love what I do, and yeah. being around kids and every everything like that. Um, Michelle, man, I really appreciate you spending this. Uh, Tom, being with us, our viewers, our listeners, if this episode helped you in any way, uh, please share it. Uh, you can find her on her social media. Uh, what's your, what's your uh, social media on uh, Instagram? I got some crazy ones. So my social media, my Instagram is Shelly Mac Attack. Yeah, Shelly Mac Attack. Shelly underscore Mac underscore Attack. My Twitter, one of my students made it uh-huh. a long time ago. So it's why is YG Lil Kissick is my Twitter. YG Lil Kissick, yeah, YG okay. Lil Kissick. So definitely, I'm um, definitely go follow Michelle on uh, the social media platforms, guys. If you haven't checked out the movie on TV One, Downsize with uh, uh, Boris Cujo and his wife, um, it's Nicole a very good movie. Yeah, what's her name? Nicole Ari Parker. Yeah, Nicole. Yeah, Nicole. Um, I call her Nicole. That's my homegirl. Uh, okay. <laughs> so um, she know you, uh, and then we family, so we all family. So um, yeah. it, was, it was a great movie. Like I said, I watched it with our family. Uh, again, Shell, thank you for um, enlightening My parents us. were actually over the house when we watched it here. Huh? Oh, you your said parents my parents were over there? Too. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, thank you for sharing your knowledge, man, and, and just really uh, – those conversations that me and you have, I'm definitely glad that we got to share uh, share it today. All right? Uh, thanks, y'all. Thank you again. Thank y'all.